I've always felt that that uh, if Scott Rowland ever put on a Cincinnati uniform, you'd be a better ball club for it. Uh, kill me when he went to St. Louis because he was in the same division, and 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 the fact that uh, this club now has him at an age when I think he still has a number of productive years left in him. Um, but I, I think more than that, I, when you consider the kind of person he is, I mean, he brings integrity, he brings character, he brings uh, the desire to win at all costs into the clubhouse. And especially when you have a team as young as this team is, to have a guy like that uh, maintaining that kind of presence in the clubhouse day in and day out, it can't do anything but make you a better team. With Scott aboard and the influx of young players, uh, what does this team have to do to turn this around into this year and next year? Well, I don't know that they can do it this year. Right, yeah. I mean, that, that's, a, that's a pipe dream yeah. when, you know, you, when you've had the kind of run that they've had. Um, but I think when the deal was made, Walt Jockety made the comment, the rest general manager, this de deal is maybe, in, if anything, even more about next year and, and, and in the future beyond that because I think this club has every intention in the world of trying to get Scott signed to a, a contract extension. Um, he's the kind of guy that you want to build a ball club around. I mean, they're solid at first with Votto. They're solid second with Phillips. Now they've got Scott at third. And we all knew that when this season ended, before the trade was made, the third base was going to be a position that they had to address. Yeah. With all due respect, Edwin Encarnacion simply did not get it done. Um, they don't have to worry about that position now. And, and so that in and of itself gives them an edge up, I think, as far as 2010 is concerned, and hopefully for a lot longer than that. You bring Reds baseball into all of our homes. Do you still enjoy it after all these years, Marty? Uh, I've got the best gig on earth. I mean, uh, to, to have been around doing it for 36 years and, and to knock on wood, uh, I'm a young 67 years old and still enjoy coming to the park. I'm down here five and a half hours every day before the game because I love being down here. Um, I, I plan on being around for a long time and as long as my health holds up and, and uh, I still view every game uh, as a challenge. I think this is the toughest sport of all to broadcast well because nothing happens until the pitcher throws the ball. Yeah. And, and I still look upon it as a challenge and I still have the desire to go to the ballpark and talk about the Reds and, and do this on a daily basis. So uh, I'm I'm, I'm blessed. I, for me, I've got the best job in the world. And I'm sure uh, you miss Nuxy every day. That was a great partnership. Well, it was one of the more unique partnerships in our profession in this business. I mean, we were together uh, day in, day out for 31 years, and I don't think there's anybody no. that's had a run like that as a broadcast tandem in the big leagues. Maybe Jack Buck and Mike Shannon, but certainly no one else. And uh, it was a special relationship. And there's a day goes by that I don't think of him in some form or fashion. Um, and always will as long as I'm in this business. Uh, I was blessed to be able to work with him because he taught me so much, uh, not so much about the business, but more about life and how you conduct yourself and how do you deal with people. And, and uh, as I say, I was blessed. Of all the places I could have ended up yeah. and the people that I could have worked with, uh, it was a double hit for me to come here and to work with Joe. Well, how are you hitting the golf ball? Uh, it's a painful work in progress. Where's the Players Club in Woodland Trails? It's in Muncie, Indiana, sir. Good track? It's not bad. I'll have to get up there sometime and play it. Marty, who's going to come out of this central race as you look at the end of the season here? You know, it's interesting. I was just talking with Walt Jockety, and I asked him, uh, who do you like best, the Cubs or the Cardinals? And I true, I really like the Cubs better because I think their pitching is better. I have a great. Uh, I, I, I've, I haven't thought all year long that Car the Cardinal pitching was that good. After Chris Carpenter and Adam Wainwright, they they drop off big time. Not only in their rotation, but also in their bullpen. And I think that's where the Cubs have them now. If you if you paid off on who scores the most runs, the Cardinals are going to outslug almost anybody with the addition of Matt Holliday with Pujols and and Ludwig and all the rest of those guys. But I really believe at the end of the day, unless the Cardinals do something now that the trade deadline has come and gone to help themselves pitching-wise, I think the Cubs have a better chance of winning the division.